I've been asked by a few educators to help them to set up their schools to get to communicate with their students, help with remote learning and that sort of process. So there's a lot of platforms that people are using and can go to. Um, I'm going to be sharing my viewpoint and why I use this and why I recommend this system. So I use uh, Jitsi, which is an open source platform. It's an extremely powerful video and audio conferencing platform. You're able to share your screen, stream videos, a whole lot in there. Jitsi is totally free. It's open source. Jitsi runs in a browser on the desktop. You download an app if you're on a mobile and there's no registration process. You get the link, you click on it and you into the meeting. Preferred browsers would be something like Chrome browser. I'm using Opera or Firefox. How do we build up this tool for students? I would recommend that you get a platform that's dedicated to whiteboards because with teachers they want to use a digital whiteboard to explain certain stuff. Miro is totally dedicated to whiteboards, cloud-based whiteboards. So if you get a conferencing tool that's got a whiteboard built into it, it's not going to be anywhere near what a program like Miro does because Miro is focused on whiteboards only. They're not even worried about conference call setups. They have the ability to import somebody to put on a video chat, but the core focus is whiteboards. So why not utilize them? You can get an account. There's different uh, costings you can get, but there's one free version where you can get up to three whiteboards that you can use at the same time. And most of us can use a whiteboard when you're done with that class, you can clear that whiteboard and you can create a new whiteboard for the next class. So for free, you have a total powerful online cloud-based whiteboard system. Next recommendation is um, as far as document repository goes, when you're sending your class projects to do, uh, when you want to control who has access to certain files or certain folders, why do you want to use a conferencing tool to try and manipulate that setup? Why don't you use a platform that's designed for that? And I recommend strongly the Google ecosystem. They've got Google Docs, which is for uh, like Microsoft Word, Google Sheets, which is like Excel. Google Forms, which is brilliant. You set up your own forms. You can do little examinations. You can do surveys, everything on Google Forms. And then you get Google Slides, which you can do presentations. Plus, there's such a lot of other Google features. But the point I get to is, if you can work in this ecosystem, then you might use Jitsi to communicate with your students when you're busy showing them something. But for the rest of the time, when you're sending them projects or checking whether they've, they've completed their projects, you can work in folders using Google Drive, Google Docs, all of these things work. And because they're cloud-based, they synchronize over different devices. And that's what I enjoy about working. So these are the three pockets that I use. I use Jitsi, I use Miro for the whiteboard, and I use the Google ecosystem for all documentation. Okay, so let me show you. I'm going to go into the Jitsi meeting. So you create the meeting and you will send it to your students. Uh, I recommend don't have a, a meeting with like 30 students in it. Break it up into maybe manageable groups, five, six, seven of them. Do a session with them, then get the next batch on because then you can focus on them and it doesn't get lost in the fact that you're just talking and nobody's interacting with you okay because the technology allows for that bit of interaction and that gives a bit of better feel than just a one-way communication so you go to meet.jit.si forward slash and then you put in the name of the room that you want to use so you could put in uh, mr ramsey maths uh, standard 7a uh, Tuesday Wh whatever you want to put in so that would be the room and you would send to your class that as the link now the beauty of Jitsi is it runs fully in a browser so you can run it in Google Chrome the preferred browser I'm running it in Opera or you could run it in Firefox so you open it up the link you click on the link and it opens immediately if you're running on a mobile device You've got it down, it will prompt you to download the application, the Jitsi Meet application. Click on the link on your mobile and then it will open up into the meeting automatically. So let me show you here. If I got this link and I just press enter, it will take me right into the meeting. And that's it.
There is no registrations, no signing ons, nothing. So I'm just muted my mic and my video. It's as simple as that. That's why with Jitsi, the barrier to entry is so low. You send a link, they open it up on, if it's a desktop or a laptop, it's literally click the link and you're in the meeting. Okay, so there, there are tons of features. I run a YouTube channel where uh, I explain all of these uh, features and functions of it. The one thing I just want to show you, which is probably the question that people ask about a whiteboard, would be how do I access this whiteboard if I'm busy explaining to the students? So at the bottom left area, you see it says share your screen. What you will do is click on share your screen and then it gives you a few options. The one I want to go to is Opera tab. That's because I got an Opera browser open. If I've got Chrome, it will say Chrome tab. If I go there, you can see Miro online. When I click there, if this whiteboard has some audio that it plays when I go through it, I can say share audio. In this case, I don't have to worry to click that. I'm going to click share. OK, so imagine my students are all online and I'm the teacher. I click share. It will take me to the application. I click. So I'm working on the application now and I start to do things. Oh, you can see I was busy working just to show you. Uh, this is a document out of Google Docs that I pulled through here. OK, if I double click on this, you'll see it will open up in Google Docs and I can keep working on this. This is all cloud based. It's linked in the cloud. OK, so I can do that on the Google Docs. I can come here and zoom in and work with different whiteboard markers or whatever I want to. So this is the flexibility. Now, while I'm working here, on the other side, the students will be able to see this on their screens. Now, this is in a small screen because I've got this in tile view. OK, if I click it on to full view, this is what the students are seeing. So I'm working here. If I move this particular, oh, I'm on the line there. If I click there, if I move this document over here, when you look there, you'll see it's changed over there. So they are seeing real time how I'm working here. Sometimes it's good to put your video on for your students so that they can see your face when you're talking there. So you can flip the video on and as you're talking, they'll see your face in the corner and then you can carry on working in this area and they will see this happening here. So I'll switch the video off. OK, so that's how the students are able to integrate with you teaching on a whiteboard and you have all the features on the whiteboard because you are sharing your screen with them. Now, yeah, I'll close on one of the key pointers that I think makes Jitsi very unique is that most other platforms, if you want to share your screen, you share it. If somebody else wants to share their screen, you've got to give them the screen so that they can share it with you. In Jitsi, it works differently. You can have everybody sharing the screens at the same time. So I'm going to just go and say stop sharing here. Click on here. What will happen is you can have it in tile view. You have each of the students, if they are working on their side, say you've sent them documents and they're working on a Google Doc and they're functioning in there and they're busy with an exercise and you want to be able to see what they're doing. You let them share all their screens. So on, on their screens, they all have this share your screen. So they will have share your screen. So if you have 10 people on here, there will be 10 little small squares with everyone's screen on. And when you want to see this screen, you just click on that screen. It will maximize it. And then you can speak to that student and say, OK, um, this is this is what you must change and so forth. So you can monitor each student. So you don't have to go to switch off one screen, share the next one, switch off the other one screen. You can have everyone share their screens and you can just pop in between the two to monitor it. So you if you run a class of the nature where um, the folk have got to work on a particular project. They, you give them the task and then they open the task. It has to be on the computer somehow. If it's say in Google Docs and they are busy working there, you tell them to share their Google Docs while they're working on it. And then you can sort of supervise it as you go around. So that for me is a great powerful tool for teaching. So you can see everyone's screens by just clicking on them and then minimizing them in the window. OK, there's, there's lots of other tools that you have here about video sharing and all that sort of thing and streaming it live. But I think these are the features that are key for educators. It's the ability to talk 
or to see each other on video, the ability to share the screen and that you can share any screen. You can share, in this case, we'll focus on using the whiteboard of Miro and then the Google Docs. If I wanted to show them one of these, say this Google Doc, if I open up this here and I wanted to show it to them, I can go the same route and click there and just go Opera and I want to go to the Google Docs. And there, if you look at them, they are looking at my Google Docs. So I can share any screen that I open. Okay, so hopefully that helps you and uh, gets you thinking in this direction. Let me just stop sharing. And to put down the call, that's where we will get it. Okay, and just a call out to this company, 8x8. They've played an incredible role in supporting the Jitsi community because they use the Jitsi platform for their video conferencing platform also. So that is like a symbiotic relationship and it works phenomenally well.